In this video, I relate how production in the long run relates to production in the short run, and I show what implications that has for the average cost curve. So let's go ahead and take a look at an ISO cost, ISO quant diagram, where we have several ISO costs and corresponding ISO quants that correspond to different levels of quantity. Now these are optimal input bundles for a given level of output. And as such, they correspond to the long run cost curve. If I could trace out the quantities and the dollar amounts that it takes to actually get on this ISO cost, and I could relate those two to one another, I could go ahead and trace out this long run average cost curve. Of course, I would construct average cost, but that's pretty easy to get once I have quantity and total cost. These tangencies are what allow us to get our long-run average cost curve. But where does the short-run average cost curve come from? Well, the thing is that in the short run, what we typically think of as capital is fixed at some level, and it takes some time to actually adjust the number of machines that we have employed in the in the production process. So for example, it, we might be stuck with K1 units of, of capital in the short run. And as, as a result, the only point at which we would be using the optimal input bundle is when we have K1 and whatever amount of labor got us to this tangency. Otherwise, we would have a suboptimal input bundle because we couldn't adjust K. All we could do is adjust L. So, for example, if we wanted to produce Q2, what we would have to do is we'd have to keep the capital level fixed and go over here to Q2. We couldn't go to this tangency even though we want to. So we're stuck with K1 units of capital, and so we're only able to expand the amount of labor that we have to get our output to expand the way that we want it to. And so what happens is, is that if we were to draw an ISO cost, we would see that the ISO cost is above the ISO cost that we could actually freely adjust our capital and labor. And so what we could see is that in the short run, our average costs are higher than they would be in the long run. Once we get to the long run, we can just move up along this ISO quant by adjusting capital, amping up the number of machines we have, scaling back the amount of overtime that the workers are actually putting in, and we can get to the optimal input mix. So you can see that the short run average cost is always and everywhere above the long run average cost. The next thing that you see in this graph is that when we have a different level of capital, we're stuck in a different short run. So, for example, if we were at K2 units of capital, that is a point on the long run average cost curve, but it is also a point on its own short run average cost curve. It also gives us a, a quantity, Q2, but if we wanted to produce a different quantity, we would have to do so suboptimally because K2 isn't the right amount of capital to actually use to produce anything other than Q2. As you can see, with the blue short run average cost curve, which corresponds to the K2 level of capital, what happens is that we get a higher cost everywhere except for the point where we have just the right amount of capital. Now one question you might have when you're looking at this is, well, what if I'm stuck with too much capital? How can too much capital be a bad thing? Well, it turns out that if we're stuck with K3 units of capital, it might be optimal for us to use less capital uh, to produce, say, Q2 units of output. But the problem is, is that we can't scale it back, and we're still paying for that. So, on one hand, if you have too much capital, you pay for capital you don't need, and you hire less labor. Now, on the other hand, if you don't have enough capital, you have to hire more labor than will be optimal, and that ends up costing you more as well. So there turns out to be a sweet spot for any short run where you can get just the, the right amount of, of costs, so that your costs in the short run will be the costs in the long run. 
And that sweet spot is the spot at which there's a tangency between an iso quant and an iso cost.